Welcome gamers to Dwarf Fortress Premium. This is the Steam version of Dwarf Fortress. My name is Daz Tactic, and hopefully I'll be sort of explaining uh, how to play this game. And I'm really gearing this, this particular video to new players. Um, I sort of get where your mind will be with the game. I know that you really, all you want to be doing is building a fortress. You don't want to be worrying about the incredible world that is generated around you. Not yet anyway. So let's just get you into that mode. Um, like and subscribe if you do like this content. I'll be, do, I'll be doing a lot of Dwarf Fortress content from this version of the game uh, coming up. If you are somebody that's tried to get into Dwarf Fortress and then struggled with the interface, this version really does um, fix a lot of those sorts of potential issues, I guess, that you may have actually had with the uh, with the game in the past. So uh, just be aware that it's um, it's a lot more user friendly than what it has ever been before. But the base mechanics are still the same. So we're going to go and create a new world. I'm, I'm not going to read all this. I'm just going to go click on OK. I, I'm mindful that I don't want to waste your time. I, I know your focus will be on what do I click on? What do I build? <laughs> create world. This for me is so exciting, this part of it, but I know that for you it won't be. <laughs> I'm guessing it won't be. Uh, it creates a world, uh, so it's just generating the graphics and getting everything ready for now. But the, it then builds this world, it sort of, it builds the elevation, temperature, rivers, lakes and minerals, and then it builds a hundred years of history. Look at the number of different historical events that are happening. It's cherry picking just a few of them every so often to sort of then show us. Uh, but this for me is, like no other game does this. Uh, so while it's while we're waiting, I'll just let it, that actually happen. But I love what this happens in this in this particular phase of the game. We've now got sixty six thousand different historical events that are in the world that we're going to be playing. We've got thirteen thousand historical figures uh, that have been in the world. There's all sorts of different histories that have happened in those hundred years. What do you care? <laughs> you just want to you just want to build your first fortress. Play now, then. In that case. <laughs> So we're just going to see, it then saves that world. And so uh, you can always come back. If, you, if, you, if a fortress fails, you can play in the same world. So if you're loving the lore that's created in that, in that uh, Legends phase, and you also then impact those, those areas as well. You play, your civilization is just one tiny little speck. It's sort of in the middle of, of this massive area. Uh, we're just going to be playing fortress mode. Legends mode will then go through those 66,000 events and the different people that were created, but we... Won't delve into that. I, it's sort of. I hope that at some point you love the game enough that that becomes an important part of your journey, because it really is very very cool. Now, quick start and short tutorial. So, would you like your fortress located in a forested, mineral-rich region of this world where you can play through a short tutorial? Non-interactive help will be available whenever you whatever you decide. And so, yes, we do because. There's so many different places you can start in Dwarf Fortress. You can't start in the oceans out through here, but you can start pretty much anywhere else. And I would urge you to not min-max your play style once you get used to the actual game itself. So for your second or third game, just go somewhere a bit more unusual, like um, you know, go to the frozen wastes of the north and just see how your uh, how your survival goes there, or um, you know, start in a swamp or start in a dangerous biome or something like this. Anyway, we're just going to start the tutorial. Looks like we're starting over here. We do have a little riv rivulet, a little creek that's running past uh, our little area. Okay, so here we are. Now this is, um, I, I will point certain things out because um, I won't be able to help myself. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'll just let it sort of save the game. So a Dwarven Outpost, you've arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding, forbidding wilderness beyond. What do you care? What do you care? You just want to see it playing. So we'll just click on OK. <laughs> OK. So this is the tutorial. Uh, camera controls, WASD. So that's new. We haven't had that before. By the way, what I would strongly suggest is that read some of these other little things or hold the middle mouse button and drag the view. I find this so much better. I find the actual, the distances in WASD in the game is too much. So I don't particularly like uh, that. To change the uh, camera's elevation, press the E or C, so you can do that. Uh, so you can sort of go up or you can go down underground. Um, you know, depending on what you can see, you can see there that there's there's um, water. That's the depth of water back in through there. We'll just come back up to this particular level. Or you can just use your mouse, your, your the scroll wheel of your mouse as well. Uh, in fact, I've got it set on, on very, on, actually I'm going to have to re reset that. It's um, not good. I might just pause that. I don't know if I can do that straight away. 
yeah, I've just been playing with the uh, with the settings a little bit. So uh, I've just got certain things that I'm used to playing with games, and so I'm just sort of uh, tweaking the settings. That's better. So I can now sort of scroll up one at a time. There is like a fast scroll, but I, I don't know if, if you'd ever bother using that, to be honest. Okay, so here we are. So that's camera control. So I'll just go and uh, maximize that one back out again. Also, if you are somewhere, like if we sort of go down underground and we get lost somewhere else, we can just press the F1 key and it will then take us back to this particular location. That's our hot keys. So uh, we'll just go next. Uh, camera control, this is zoom in and out. You can just use the the, um, the square brackets to zoom in or back out again as well, or, this, or the control and the scroll wheel as well to do the same thing. No worries, that's 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 part one of the tutorial ticked off. We're, we're underway. We're now at part two. Now this is, and I will explain um, the gotchas with these sorts of things because you're likely to do one thing where it may be better to actually focus a little bit differently. Uh, so we'll talk about this as we go through. It's time to get into the work. Let's start by digging a stairwell into the ground. There may be plenty of hillside to dig into, but you'll want to seek wealth below the surface. Mining tasks are designated on the play area. Begin by um, by clicking the highlighted mining button. Now you can see down, this is the button down through here. Before we do that, let's have a bit of a look at the world that we're in. Let's just go and, and sort of minimize that one. We can just use the WASD keys. So we do actually have some mountain sides in through here. And if I do sort of scroll back, you can see it's not, they're not very steep. So we can sort of go back up. This is, this is the trees, the tree layer that we're sort of seeing back in through here. We also have some back over this side. So it's fairly flat terrain. Um, there's more over this side as well. Now, usually I would be building into a mountain. Uh, that's sort of the way I would sort of be focusing on it. Like, you know, somewhere over here perhaps or somewhere like that. But the game doesn't do that. Uh, it does present you, in fact, I've now lost where they are. So just press F1. There we go. The game is actually sort of telling us that really we sh it wants to, um, uh, it does want to be building down. Now it does sort of say that the riches are, are down below and that's true, but you don't need to start looking for riches. So it's a bit misleading when it does say that one, but this is what we have to do. So we'll open up the mining and we will just do, we'll follow the tutorial. Okay, so there are several ways to mine. Stairwells selected start uh, at one elevation and are completed at the next, or you know, or completed deeper down. Click the surface, move the camera down one level, and click the underground. Reversing the order also then works. And so what we want to do through here is, I think the natural way of, of looking at this, if you're a new player, will be to just go somewhere and think, okay, look, I'm going to start over here somewhere. I've got the stair mining selected. I'm going to click, and then I'm just going to un like I, 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 I unclick. I'm then going to start to scroll down and just do like a maybe sort of like four or five levels. You don't need to go very far on this particular map. Like this map is uh, doesn't have any aquifers or anything like that that will get in our way. We do that when this is going to be now. This is now a build order where they're going to be um, they're going to be looking to finish off the stair there and then coming up the stair through that side there. <clears throat> now what I'd suggest that you do is not do that <laughs> okay what i'd suggest is that you actually do at least a four by uh, sorry two by two uh so just have a bigger stair than what it's suggesting so just you can make it broader and let's just go and scroll back down again and then click that way this way we end up with a with a bigger area for the dwarves to walk down because there is a, a limit to how many creatures can be on a square and so this one it just will then open things up so when you're building your stairwell that's one way of doing it when you're actually playing your own game, you may want to instead of building into um, straight down, which this is a this is a point of um, this is a high risk uh, area. This is an entry into our fortress that is going to be very hard to defend. Um, you know, defending an open stairwell like this is almost impossible. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's not it's not a very safe way of starting the game. I prefer to actually be looking at ways I can then sort of build great big gates and doors and things like that to sort of stop anything from coming in. Now we can still build around this eventually, but um, this is this is a, a, a point of threat in our fortress, but it's what the tutorial is telling us to do. So we'll just go and do it. Let's uh, now unpause and then the miner will then go through. So just press the space bar. Um, and it's just is saying you should regularly pause uh, what you're doing. Now the miner is already now just always going through. This is still unbuilt. This has been built. So she's just building away getting deeper and deeper, and then we're down in the, in the final stages, almost, here she comes. There we are. So the stairwell has now been completed. <clears throat> so that's, and I've got to say, 
in the old version, in the classic version, you had to physically say, start the stair here with a particular uh, set of keyboard shortcuts, then change your keyboard shortcuts to then go into the up down stair. So you had like a down stair, an up down stair, and then an up stair through here. Now, conceptually, the game still has that in there. So if you've if you're playing the game and you end up in a position where you're got an up down stair and uh, all of a sudden there's there is an up down stair on this level and then there's a down stair here there's no there's no stair in between and so that will actually stop your dwarves from walking on that i thought i just mentioned i should, probably shouldn't have even mentioned it it's probably just going to be confusing it won't happen on these on this tutorial level but it can happen like if you're digging into sand or something like that so uh, just be aware that there is this makes it a bit safer all the way around for a, your dwarfs to be able to march down, but also if there are little issues with the way that the uh, stairs can sort of collapse at different points, then um, it's going to stop that from being a problem as well. But the, in the tutorial mode, that won't be an issue because you've got nice firm uh, ground underneath you. Okay, so let's make a safe place to work. So select regular mining uh, mode to the left of the stairwell. So now it wants us to go back to this, to this, uh, this, so this one here, like dig a regular hallway or room. What this one does, and Again, conceptually, um, this, this is a little bit hard to understand, and I will explain this in, better in other tutorials. You've got three layers to every Z level on the game. You've got like a, a, a like a almost like a ceiling type layer, and you've got then a, an inter, intervening sort of layer that you then work on. But then there's another layer underneath that, which is the floor layer. And so when we dig through here, we're digging through the floor layer, but we're actually existing on the um, on this. Um, on this, uh, what is it? The the actual like the the open area, and we don't actually have a layer above us. I'm not, okay, I won't I won't delve into that one too much. But everywhere we go when we dig, we're just digging in that middle zone. So, this one digs into the into the middle zone. This one digs through all three of those layers when it's doing just so conceptually, it's still exactly the same as what it ever has been. But it's so much easier doing it this with this new interface. But it's still conceptually there. Anyway, that's, it's not really important from in, in the terms of, uh, of this tutorial, so I apologize for wasting probably a minute there with that. Uh, let's make a safe place to work. So uh, select regular mining mode to the left of the, stair, of the stair mining mode. Dig a rectangle underground big enough for a large stockpile and some workshops. Consider that most workshops are three by three squares. Mining through the stone layers uh, further down may take longer, but it leaves boulders, which are essentially building materials or essential building materials. Later on, you can uh, consider making a meeting area from the zones menu. Otherwise, your citizens will continue to gather by the wagon outside. All right, now this one leaves a lot of holes in your fortress. There's a lot of things here that, that don't make a that won't make a lot of sense to you uh, when you when you start doing what it tells you specifically to do, <laughs> because you're ultimately like think in terms of security. Uh, like if we get attacked by goblins, what do I want to have? I want to I don't want to have a big open area for them to charge into. I don't want to then go down to the bottom of the of the fortress and have a big open area for them to to just walk straight into an attack. So we're going to change things up a little bit here, and we're going to start our actual fortress off away from this area but we'll come down to this level here so we will actually go and use this mining mode and we're just going to dig i'm going to dig like a, a a chamber out from the actual stairwell so when the stairwell comes in i'm just going to build a chamber in through here i'm then going to start to build like it's asking me to build like a, a large area that's uh, that's only 20 tiles which is tiny that's tiny in dwarf fortress so we're not going to do that what we're going to do is we're going to create a choke point there for a stairwell, so I'm just going to click there. I'm then going to make it a two, a two, um, a corridor that's just too wide in through the site, like two, uh, two squares wide, and I'm then going to create rooms for the actual, um, for the, uh, for the individual workshops. Now, actually, maybe I won't. I think I'll, I'll follow what the tutorial is wanting us to do. I'll still build a, a, um, a, a corridor that sort of runs down there, though. Um, yeah, I'll still do that. I'm going to build a. Um, I'm going to build a workshop. Now it's saying that a workshop is the three by three area. One thing I like to do though is to actually have um, a, a little bit extra for, um, like, if it's a three by three area, I like to have each workshop have its own stockpile of things that it uses. And so in this case, uh, I won't make it a three by three. Let's make it say a um, uh, a four by whatever. So let's just go across. And by the way, I can I can middle click and just keep on dragging this one back. 
that will give me a little bit extra. Yeah, four by four by um, by whatever length is going to be okay. And we'll do the same thing down here for the stockpile. But the stockpile really should be a lot bigger than um, than what we've been looking at through this side. So I'm going to make this one a um, let's make it a six by whatever that is as well. And I'm just going to now connect these up. So let's just go and, and have it so that we end up with some ways through there. Okay, so um, the mining, I'm just going to unpause. The miner will then come back down and you'll see this one tick over. But in reality, we're going to have a lot more than what we sort of see through here as well. It says, later you can consider making a meeting area from the zones menu. Otherwise, your citizens will continue to gather by the wagon outside. Now, again, it's not the right place to be talking about this, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, this is something this is much later like it's not important for us to actually have that uh, in this uh, right now in the actual fortress so I've already got to this point and um, so we've already gone beyond what, what it's doing I'm just going to pause this while while she then continues on but the this is misleading so if you're if you're playing the tutorial do it substantially but always be thinking okay I've now got one point one point coming into the fortress that I, I can now defend. So if there is goblins coming down, at least I can build a door here. The doors, the, the goblins will then need to bring trolls to be able to break through the door. So that saves our, uh, us a little bit, but not much really. Eventually they will break that one down. Um, anyway, I'll pause this and we'll come back. By the way, there's a percentage chance every time when they're mining that they're going to be uh, leaving, uh, you know, they're going to be sort of leaving boulders or minerals behind. And so these are, if we just sort of minimize that and, and hover over that one, we've got um, alanite back in through that side, we've got uh, brimstone back in this way. Um, so, like, there's different sorts of, like, these are smoky quartz clusters down, down through this side. There's some um, rough myrians, which are, are uh, like a gemstone. Uh, so, as, they mi as she mines, she's going to be sort of getting different sorts of boulders. Here we've got uh, andesite back into this way. And these all have different values and different ways of sort of working. I should point out that when you really are playing the game, you're not just going to be just doing this with this particular miner. You're going to be having others doing different things at the same time. Like we, in the tutorial, it, it does it sequentially, and that's okay for the tutorial. But um, we would be my, we would be chopping wood. We'd be getting other things ready um, as soon as things actually start to develop. Anyway, let's uh, let's just leave. She's that's enough. We'll just click on OK. So we're now up to part three of the tutorial, which is stockpiles. So the supplies of the wagon are in danger of being carried off by wild creatures. They really are. Like there's all sorts of birds and things that will come in and swoop and, and grab things from your uh, from your fortress. It's not from your fortress, from your, from your open wagon. It's time to build a stockpile underground to, un to unload them. Stockpiles are crucial in moving supplies around your fortress uh, where they are needed. Yes, this is critical. And so you can see down through here, we click on stockpiles, we click on the plus, and we're just going to drag a stockpile into this area. So we're just going to go and click and I'll, I'll make it this, this large. Now notice that it doesn't actually fill the areas it's, it's being mined and that's okay. We'll just accept this for now and we're just going to make this one all. This is the, like, even though I made it bigger, it, it doesn't actually go there, but I'll just let these guys start to bring the stuff down down from, from upstairs. In fact, I might just pause this. A few little things we can do right now. She's now finished this, this room. So we can go and repaint the stockpile. So I can go and click on that stockpile again and just remake the area. That then does make it the large area that we've actually now put aside for the stockpile itself. Um, now we accept that one. We saw that it was all. Now let's have a read of what they're suggesting because this is quite important. Uh, later you may want to customize your stockpiles by clicking on them and, and pressing the custom button to forbid certain categories. Like refuse for example, a separate refuse stockpile is a good idea to keep your fortress clean. If the stockpile menu is still open, you can close it now by right clicking. So we can right click any time to, to close it. But let's do what it's suggesting because I think this is important. There's a few things we don't want to have in, this, in these stockpiles. Um, the things that they've brought in so far are fine, but we don't want to, don't want to have boulders. We don't want to have wood. Um, they're not important for this. We want to get the good stuff in. We don't want to be bringing in lizards' remains or um, you know fish remains or anything like that. That's not what we want in here. So let's go and do the custom now. So this is an important part of it. So we just go and click on custom. And so the way this one works, I'll just scroll that one up to the top, uh, is we've got all sorts of different 
weird and wonderful things. There's so much in Dwarf Fortress, but this this is really quite nice the way this is now presented, the way that you can then sort of find exactly what you want to do. And you can turn it on or off certain aspects, you know, like you can go and, and click certain things off. So if I go to stone, I can't click that one off as, oops, hang on. I, I, I can't, look on stone through there, that tick box there, I've got to actually then go and click on it and then go to none for everything. So I'm just gonna go none with stone. I'm gonna do the same with wood. So just go across to here with it, it's got all the different trees. There's different classifications, like the stone actually has different classifications of stone. But by doing this one, I'm, I'm getting rid of all the classifications. Uh, when I come back up, the other things we don't want is refuse. So I don't want any type of refuse in here. I don't want corpses in here either. So just go across to there. That's probably it. So that will, that will be okay. And then just right click and that way we've now got a custom uh, stockpile. Uh, where our guys will then bring things in. Now, if it's already got like rough myriads back and through this side or andal site, it won't take them away unless we actually create a, a stone stockpile or a wood stockpile, which we will do. Uh, but let's just continue on. So, um, uh, yeah, you can you used to close the menus as well as escape. You can press escape as well. Now we're up to phase four of this tutorial. We're actually ripping through it, which is quite good. With shelter already underground, it's time to build. First, we need building materials like wood or boulders, which we've seen the boulders down through here. Before you start chopping down trees, you may want to uh, create a dedicated wood stockpile. Haulers will also drop wood in all of your stockpiles unless you turn it off in the, uh, in the custom stockpile menu. I'll do this one after, but this is important. We, do, we will be wanting to have a wood stockpile somewhere. In fact, what I can do, I'll, I'll make a wood stockpile down in, in here. So we'll just go across to our stockpiles, go to plus, and just create like a, I'm just going to create like a little four by four in here right now, and uh, we're just going to accept and then click on wood. That's done. So we've now got a wood stockpile. You can see the little wood symbol at the top there. I love this, by the way. This is new. Um, so there's a lot of lot of really really cool things in this version of the game. If you if you have played the other game, the other version. Um, before you start chopping down trees, you may want to get credited with a wood stockpile. Hoarders will also drop wood in all your, in your all stockpile unless you turn it off in the custom stockpile menu, which is what we just did. This is why it's a, I'm thinking that it um, the the way it steps through the tutorial, some of it, it's a bit confusing. We did the custom. It's now, now, now telling us to do the custom right now. So we can go and click on that, open it up, then go into custom and then turn off those things if we're wanting to, and then just right click to close those down. You get used to the interface fairly quickly. It does work very, very well. Uh, when you're ready, open the wood cutting menu and de designate the trunk of a tree on the surface. Make sure your woodcutter will walk to the designated location or can walk to the designated location. There's some, sometimes there will be areas that you can't reach. And so just be aware of that. There's, like for example, if you've got like a raging river between you and a tree that you're wanting to chop down, it can't get across without swimming and that's gonna be dangerous. So Let's uh, go back up to the top. So again, I can either scroll my way up or I can press F1 and that will then take me back to uh, to the start. So we've just got this one through here. And so we go to the wood cutting menu back through this side and we're now just gonna start chopping down trees. Now we've got trees all the way around us. So I can just click and drag. They've, they've now been designated for, for cutting. Let's un, un, uh, unpause the game. I'll just get a few more of these. These are near the river. This is, by the way, uh, when you see boulders, this, this is easy to cross, but you can see there are these dead, dead animals already. So we've already been killing things on the surface. So our guys will keep on doing whatever their current job is, and then eventually they'll, one of them will come across to start to chop down the wood. Um, I will, actually no, I won't talk about how you can manage your dwarves, but you can actually force them to do certain things. Anyway, they're having no trouble at all crossing this river just because of the boulders. Come on, where's our woodcutter? A woodcutter is thinking it's more important to get the stuff downstairs. I might just pause until he comes back up. And it, look, it's fine for that to happen. Here he goes. We've now got a, a flashing one. He's now going to chop down this tree. We just go back up a little bit. There it goes. So we just watch these as they fall down. Bang. <laughs> and so he'll just keep on doing that one. So um, now, um, if all your stockpiles are full, go ahead and place another one. And we don't need to do that at this point in time. We, we, it's, it's fine with wood and things like that to leave them outside initially. Uh, but we um, eventually, if we think we're going to need it, we're going to need to go downstairs. But let's um, let's just go back down to uh, to where we actually had our, our fortress. 
um, down through here. And you can see this is now filling up with, with actual wood in through this side as well. So wood cutting is now complete. We've done that part of the tutorial. Okay. So building uh, so so this is now the building phase of the game. So now that you've uh, now that you have the building materials, it's time to start building. So workshops are one of many buildings you can place with the highlighted build button. Click it now. So uh, we've got the. By the way, this these layouts and things just do whatever you want, but just be be aware the principle of what we're doing here at this point in time is to have a choke point. Uh, that's that was the important aspect I was I was trying to make about this one here, but. It, this can be one big room if you want it to be. It can be each individual little room, whatever you want it to actually be. So let's go across to the build menu. We're going to go across and it's going to say um, most workshops require building materials such as wood or boulders. If you have some wood stockpiled, you'll be able to place a carpenter's workshop. Now, even if we don't have it stockpiled, that's actually misleading. We can build a carpenter's workshop anytime we like, I think. I'm pretty sure. I should test that, but I'm pretty sure that that can be built whenever you like. And it doesn't have to be built out of wood either, by the way. It can be built out of one of the boulders. Um, I tend to build out of boulders if I've got the choice, simply because in a lot of the maps that I play, they're quite hard environments, and so wood can be quite scarce, and I'm just in the habit of doing that. But that's, it's up to you what, you what you do. In this particular tutorial one, it's, there's no issues at all with the wood that you actually start with. So click uh, Workshops Carpenter and place the, the shop in an empty area on the surface or underground. Again, this is so much easier than what it used to be. Um, the, the interface was quite difficult to know where things were. Like you had a big long list of, of, um, of uh, keyboard shortcuts whenever you sort of opened up the build menu and then you had to try to figure out, oh, what am I trying to do here? <laughs> but this one's good because it gives you help file, help as well. So if you struggled with it previously, so um, again, you can sort of read, read the stuff. So most, most tasks in the fortress are started with uh, and completed at workshops. Tasks generally re require raw materials and most workshops are constructed from boulders, blocks or wood. Uh, there we go. It's just it's just nice information. It's everywhere. Like the tool tips are fantastic in this in this version of the game, and so I think this will help players a lot. Actually, just get into the actual game itself. Workshops. We open up. This the workshops that we sort of then. And so this is the this is the the menu that we were looking at there. The build menu. So we can flick around to the different other build menus if we wanted to. But these are the different workshops we can then go and build. And so the one that we're looking for is the carpenter. So it's down through here. So make beds and various furniture here, as well as bins, barrels, and more. And so the, 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 a lot you can do through here. The important ones, I guess, which it won't really tell us what to do with this. <clears throat> the important ones initially for us are the carpenter, the stone worker. So makes and this this used to be called the mason in uh, in the classic version of Dwarf Fortress. So make stone furniture here, as well as blocks which are used in constructions. There's a lot more other things you can build through there as well. Um, you've got crafts as well down through here. You'll be wanting to get one of these fairly early. In fact, the tutorial will, will send us in through there. Uh, so they're important. They're important basic ones. You'd also then be wanting to have uh, farming, like a. a um, a farming related workshop. Now this the farming workshop is not a farm. It's actually a, a, a support workshop for things that come from farms. So be aware of that. It's, it's a farming workshop, not a farm itself. And the tutorial doesn't go into farming, but we're going to. It's, I think that's going to be fairly important. Uh, but that's they're probably the, the main ones that you need initially. Um, yeah, the others you don't really need. Jewel of yes and no. Uh, mechanic is, is an important one, actually, in the start. So they're the ones that we'd be wanting to get. So the important ones will be a, a farming one. Um, now, there should also be uh, cooking as well, uh, which is not actually here. <laughs> I haven't actually got to that part of it yet. Well, maybe the farming. I'm not sure. Yeah, actually, a wide variety of food and drink related workshops can be found in this category. That's a category. So if we do click on that one through there, we're then going to uh, here we go. This has got all of the different things we then actually have in, inside here as well. So the important farming ones that we're going to be wanting fairly early will be the farm plot to be able to build, uh, to be able to grow things, the still to make drinks. The uh, dwarves don't really drink much water; they drink alcohol. <laughs> uh, the uh, butcher will need if we need to sort of butcher any of our animals. But the important ones are the still and the kitchen. They're the important areas. But if we just go back to um, to carpenter, carpenter is a standalone workshop, and I'm just going to throw it into this stockpile. So it doesn't really matter. It'll, it'll, it should then push the stockpile back out away from that area. So I'm just going to build that one into there. Actually, sorry, I can't do it. This, there's a building present. I'm just going to build it next to it. And um, there's a piece of alunite right next to it. So let's go and build it out of that. 
there's going to be different sorts of things here. Like it just tells you information on the side here. I'm just going to right click on that one and get rid of that one. Okay, so um, construct the workshop and then click on work. Click on the workshop itself. Yeah. So anyway, we've got the keep the wood stockpile where that one actually is. Now the color has come from the andel site that we've actually got. That pink color has now designated. We've now got a pink workshop. Uh, so that's that's why the, the workshops will not always be pink. It's just because of the material that we use. If we had have used this one here, it would have been yellow. And uh, we might do that actually when we build the next one. Let's, we'll, I'll try to remember to use something a bit different. So uh, anyway, that's now been built and we now need to click on the workshop. So the next phase is to make use of the workshop itself. So we go and click on it and it's just saying through here, your industrious citizens will perform any task added to the workshop. Most objects that are placed like doors and furniture must first be built at a workshop. Furniture created at Carpenter's Workshop usually takes one wood to build, add a task and make a bed, uh, chop down more trees if necessary. Well, we don't need more trees. Unpause and wait for the bed to be completed. So we have a make a bed task and then make a bed. I'm gonna add a couple of things in here uh, because there's gonna be a couple of important things. So we're gonna add a new task. And so you can see through here that there's actually a, a make bed area. And we're just gonna go and click on that one through there. I'm gonna add a new one as well. And I would suggest that you do it because we've got this, this um, opening here. I wanna sort of block that opening. I'm just gonna add a new task in through this side. And we're looking for doors. Now you'll notice that there's a big long scroll of things you can do. Make use of this, uh, this uh, search area. So as you start to type in the words, it will then sort of come back down. So make wooden door. And so we're just building those two tasks. And these are individual tasks. There's, I'll be doing other videos uh, on how to then get these much more automated. Uh, so that will be coming in uh, in other series. I won't be I won't be doing that in this series. I'll just I'll just have it so that you literally just work through the the other the other way of doing things is work orders, which I will as I say I won't cover that in this basic tutorial. So uh, but you can sort of build individual things in through here. We'll probably need more than more than one bed. Let's just go and add another bed. Um, we're going to need a few different things in through here as well. So anyway, this down through here is is just telling us what the what is at this location. At this location is the is the annulite that we actually use to build the the um, the workshop. And so yeah, it's anyways. We don't need to worry about that. <laughs> Let's just uh, right click. So add the make a bed task, and then make a bed. So we just unpause. Let uh, somebody come in to actually build this one. You can see that our stockpile is now filling up quite nicely. Here he comes, so he's now grabbed a piece of wood. He's now gonna make the bed. It does take a bit of time for them to do it. Okay, so now if the bed is now complete uh, at this point in time, if I go and click back on there, we now have a pomegranate wooden bed under where he actually is standing. Now what they will try to do with that is that they will try to place it, if they can, in the stockpile, if there's any room available, and it looks like there's no room available. So uh, so the stockpile is already full. So this is another one of these things where it would be cool if we could sort of move things away. I might just, yeah, we're gonna now place, I'll, I'll just continue on with the actual, with, with, with what we're doing through here. Now we've got the, um, we've now gone to where the beds actually, uh, like we'll place a bed. So let's go and go back to the build menu, the dig menu, and dig a, an area for the beds. So let's just go and uh, dig this corridor a bit deeper down into the fortress. And I think I'll put the bedroom over this side. I'm just gonna make it, you don't really need to have a massive bedroom in here, like a, a, the five by five would be heaps just for a communal bedroom. Um, that's that's certainly big enough. Uh, and I'm just gonna put a uh, door here as well. So we'll just let the um, let the miner sort of build. And while this is all happening, this, this character in here is, whoops, I don't wanna do that, I'll just right click. So this one is now made a, a, wood, a wood door as well and another, um, it's now bringing the logs in to work on. So it's now working on the next door. And when it finishes the next door, we'll end up with the uh, date palm wooden bed. The, um, by the way, I'll just pause that now. When we see these little symbols, it's, it's actually as an, an indi indication of quality. So as, as, the, um, as things are built, they can either just be sort of standard quality or better quality uh, back in through these different areas. Uh, we can inspect these if we wanted to. So view the item sheet. This is a finely crafted pomegranate wooden bed as an example. Just go and uh, go back in there again. Um, the um, th This is not finely crafted. If we just go and look at this one here, for example, this is just a pomegranate wooden door. <laughs> there we go. So that's what actually happens. Uh, now we want to place this door, same as what we do with the with the beds. It'll be the same sort of process. 
So um, it's uh, so I'll make this one for the door, but it will do the same thing for the bed. Beds are found in the furniture category. Unlike workshops, beds must be placed underground. And so what we're going to do through here is we're just going to go to the furniture, sorry, into the build menu. So um, build is is your construction menu essentially. Like if you need to, if you need to. If you need to mine or dig or do anything, they were called designations, and your designations are through here. So chopping down trees is, is used. You're designating an existing material to be to be impacted. Uh, mining, you're designating an, an existing uh, you know rock surface to be mined. Uh, those sorts of things. So you're actually you're actually using the you're designating the natural environment. So designations are, are what is happening over this side. Build is when you actually is you move or construct or or do something where there's not an existing thing already there and so with this door we have a doorway through here but we don't actually have anything physically in the middle here remember those three layers that i mentioned way at the start <laughs> we've got a floor layer that we're walking on and we actually have a ceiling layer through here as well when we mine we don't mine up we only mine through that middle that middle layer, and so we do actually have a, a layer of, like a, a layer above, a layer below, and this floor layer essentially. Well, the floor layer sort of works with the ceiling layer of the one one above it. It's a bit bit convoluted, but you don't need to know that. But you just know that we've got an opening in through this side here, and so we're going to go down to our build menu. We're going to go to furniture. And then these are the different sorts of furniture that we can now go and place. If we try to place something we don't have, like if we go to a table, we think, oh, okay, let's go and place a table. We'll place a table in here. We can't do it. it. needs a table. So we don't actually have a table built. So that actually won't actually happen. I'll just right click. Let's just do that again. So we go to uh, doors. Um, and so doors in through this side. By the way, if you've got like a lot of things to build, like if you're building massive bedrooms or lots of doors, just click on this little button through here it will then keep it open but we just want to have the one door in here so I'm just going to place the door there uh, pomegranate wooden door we've only got the one so we then go and click on this one through this side and so it's now been designated let's just unpause someone will then come and grab the door from here come and install it and we now have a door I might just talk about doors because doors are very very important the, the, the tutorial doesn't go into doors at all <laughs> and they're really quite critical um, if we go and click on the door itself, um, there's different things that you can do with it. So this pomegranate wooden door is now a building in our fortress. It's passable, which means anyone can just open the door and walk through it, which is what we want at this point in time. But if we get attacked by something, we're going to be wanting to lock it. So we can actually go and lock it and make it forbidden. That will stop anyone from coming through. So that's just a, a way for us to go through either passable or, or um or, or open like this. Now, there used to be even more complexity to the doors, but this is nice and simple. It's just basically you either can use it or you can't use it. And so that's how doors sort of then work. Anyway, let's just go and uh, allow this to sort of continue on and then we'll place the actual bed. Again, I personally like to have rooms for things like I like to have you know areas away from it from the rest of the fortress um, to you know to a degree just so I can end up having with more choke points more lockable uh, 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 you know places for doors or whatever else there might be okay let's just go and place a bed right in the middle of this particular big room this will be like a communal bedroom if, if we just place a bed any of the dwarves will then make use of it so we'll just go down to our build menu uh, this will be furniture in this case beds and we'll just go and place a bed in here so we've got two beds, so I might just place both these beds actually, just so that the dwarves have got um, two beds that they can share. So we'll just go across, and this is where I should have actually shown that other menu, the, um, the uh, keep building. <laughs> go and do that one as well. So we go and add those in there. And so we've now done this one. So um, with the bed placed, your workers will have somewhere to sleep. Uh, later, you can create a room with a door and use the zones menu to assign an official bedroom for each resident. Now, there used to be a, a way of doing things. I might just show that now. We're now up to the, um, to the information sheets, basically. So uh, we'll, we'll come back and talk about this in just a minute. Let's just uh, talk a little bit more about about zones and rooms because it has mentioned that a few times now so to make this into a bedroom uh, it used to be that you click on the bed and, uh, and and then actually designate the bedroom from here but the, the game as I say has simplified a lot of these concepts 
where you don't need to do that anymore. What you do to create a bedroom is you now go to zones and you'll notice that we've got like um, bedrooms in through here. So citizens will sleep in bedrooms. It should include a bed, try to enclose it with walls and or doors, do not overlap with other rooms. And so the bedroom is where our individual dwarves could then be. A dormitory uh, should include multiple beds um, and will not belong to a particular citizen. And this is what we want initially. So I'm just gonna make a dormitory in through here. So rather than clicking on the beds to create the space, I can actually just go to dormitory and uh, click on that, that area and then just make the zone there a dormitory. And so, um, uh, there we go. So we'll accept that one through that side. And um, that's now done. It's now done basically as a dormitory. There's other things we can do with this one. Assign a new or existing location to this zone. So I can sort of build, I can build collections if I wanted to, but I'm not, this is beyond the scope of this particular video. So let's not worry about that one through there. We just right click, but the zones are now really, really, really useful. Um, it used not be like this. So the game has sort of made things much more intuitive. This is a much more intuitive way of doing things. For example, the dining hall comes out of here rather than clicking on a table, <laughs> you, you do it here. If you need to build an office, you, you do it here. If you need to build a, a meeting area, you, you do it here as well. Everything comes from here, which is fantastic. It's really, really is cool. So um, anyway, that's now a dormitory. We don't have a door there. We can go back in if we wanted to. And maybe I will just very, very quickly show you work orders because we're going to need a lot of doors and need a few beds and things as well. I can go to work orders. So our manager is required to, work, uh, to add work orders to the shop. Sorry, I'm, I'm running ahead of myself. So we need a manager in the fortress first before we can do that one. All right, so we'll add a new task. We'll just go and add some more doors. Um, doors in through here. Wooden door. I can tell them to just keep on building. This is a bit dangerous. This is why you do need managers to actually sort of uh, to limit what they do. Uh, we'll be wanting a few of these. I'll just go. I wish I would remember the, the the latest one at the top. That would be pretty cool, actually. But anyway, it doesn't do that. Well, I'll get a couple of do a few doors, um, <clears throat> and uh, we'll add some more tasks for, to get them a few more beds as well. At least this one's nice and easy to find. Um, okay, that'll do us. All right, um, now the uh, information sheets. Let's have a read of this one he through here. The rest of the interface is now enabled. So all of it, we can now click on, we, before now we couldn't click on all of these different things and through here. Uh, you can click on the creatures and items uh, just as you can click on buildings to get more information about them. Click on a resident. Now we don't actually have anyone downstairs. Let's just press F1 and go back up to where they're all congregating because this is where they're actually currently meeting. And uh, we'll just go and click on, wow, it's already 42 minutes. <laughs> uh, click on one of these. This is the information from the creatures. And this, so this is, a, this is information about this particular uh, dwarf. If we go and click on a, a yak or whatever it is, yeah, a stray yak bull. Back in through here, you can sort of see um, this one's clumsy. It's four years old. <laughs> so you've got all these different sorts of uh, areas. Just have a look through yourself. Like have the game paused and just have a bit of a look through the... Um, through your, uh, through the, well, it's probably more interesting to have a look at the uh, at the dwarves, but just, you know, the, what items they've got, um, what their health is, uh, what their skill set is, uh, what the rooms they've, you know, that they're looking for, what they want, um, labor back and through here, what they, what they can do. And this is actually where you can turn things on or off for them. Like if you only want to have this particular dwarf do a particular thing, this is our expedition leader, by the way. Uh, so he's sort of like a, a semi-noble. Um, he's like the most important person in our in our fortress because he's the one that will meet with anyone that does come. But really, he's just he's just just a designated um, pleb that's sort of going to be t talking to people. But we this is where if we've got miners, and we only want to have miners working on that task. We can then just click on a mining task and have only that task will be done. Um, so by default. Um, so this one is uh, so we'll do available tasks anywhere essentially, but you can lock these sorts of things off. We'll do we'll uh, we'll only do assigned tasks. So if we wanted to have someone that's only doing mining, then just do that. So click that one off and then click that one through there. But anyway, with him, I'm happy for him to just do anything that he likes. But with your miners in particular, you may want to actually have them designated to just do mining, uh, because you do want to be sort of you know building the fortress as much as you possibly can. Uh, what else have we gotten through here? We've got, uh, we've sort of covered a lot of those sorts of things. Um, so click on a creature, click on the information sheet, uh, right click to then close it down. That's okay. And so you'll find that with a lot of, uh, of, of animals and things. I'll just go to next. We've got then alerts will come up on the right hand, sorry, on the left hand side. And you can see through here, left click to recenter and expand the options. 
This I find too big. I wish it wasn't actually narrower because the information you get from here is not usually massive. I mean, sometimes it can be, but it's um, it seems to be like often you want to be looking in the middle of the screen. And so it doesn't quite, and maybe it'll be changed by the time you're, you're watching this, but I'm not sure. We'll just right click and then we can right click on those to get rid of them. Uh, I've struck Galena and then we've got this one in through here. So again, this is just a, a sample. So dismiss the large red alerts. So we now just right click to get rid of those. And preparing for the caravan. You may need supplies before the coming of winter. To trade with the autumn caravan, you must build a trade depot from the build menu. Uh, you need something of value to trade. So crafts are an easy way to make a lot of trade goods quickly. Make the appropriate workshop with workshops crafts. And an obvious material to use to make crafts is rock. If you dig down enough layers, you will find a, a near infinite amount of boulders of various kinds, as well as some rough gems if you are lucky. Now we've already found the gems, or some gems. Uh, we've got heaps of boulders. Gems can be cut at the jeweler's workshop, encrust them with crafts and make other items even more valuable. So let's do that to finish off this particular episode. And then we'll come back in the next episode and then talk about the other things that are important to us. So um, what we'll do through here is we will we'll, we'll just do it in the same order. It's got the um, build a trade depot from the build menu. Now the trade depot needs to have access for caravans. So caravans need to be able to access it. So if we've built a staircase, they can't go down a staircase. They can go down ramps. So maybe we'll do that just again, thinking in terms of security. Let's actually have a ramp near our um, near near here. So I'll just go into the dig menu. So all of this is now open. You can see through here, dig a ramp on this level going up or dig a, a channel uh, on this ramp to go down below. So I'm just going to dig a... Um, channel I'm just going to dig just I like it aesthetically they have to be three wide by the way so three, it, it's three wide to have a, a caravan come in so we'll just go and do uh, dig that one through there uh, I'll just unpause so our dwarves will in um, will then dig dig this area so they've now built they've now dug a little little deeper where is she she's gone off for a drink or something I guess oh, he's probably in the way yeah, no, that's okay. Come on. He's asleep on that, on that area. <laughs> okay, that's probably why she's not going to dig it because um, we've got a sleeping dwarf. This metal crafter is actually asleep here. Um, what I'll, I'll do is I'll now go down a le level. So this is now the area that we've just channeled out. Uh, so we've now dug down into this layer. I can then dig across if I wanted to, or I can just keep on channeling through. Let's go and channel deeper down through this side. Um, so we'll dig, dig another couple. Actually, I'll just dig one there. Here she comes. Now, he's still asleep, so we can't do that one through there. So we're building this channel that goes down under here, but you can see that this is now underground. So it's under that level. Let's just dig across a little bit um, through here. So we'll just go to the normal mining. Again, just do whatever you want to do. Like I'll just make a little a little area through here. I might just I might just go flat for a little while and then do another channel at the back end of that. And then if we go down to the next level, I can still actually create other areas as well. So we can sort of see that this is um Oh, hang on, I'm in the wrong area. I'm in the wrong zone. This is actually the zone I'm meant to be on. So I'm glad I looked at that. I'm just going to remove those designations go to this layer. This is the layer that I wanted to do this one on. So we now sort of go further further across and um, then we'll channel at the end of this one and that will then break through the floor and ceiling of the of the layer below. So she should be coming through. Here she comes. And now we're getting into rock. So we've, we're on soil here. And so you can see there we've got the channel that does come back back down. It then sort of hits this area. And now we're into, the, into a rock area of the fortress. Let's go down one more layer. Build this one through this side. I'll build a three by three here. And then we'll actually have it come out this other side. And we'll build the trade caravan into, into here. Now the, tra the trade depot requires, and I'll show you what that looks like. We just go back into build and then the trade depot. See how it's like a, a, a big five by five area, but we, you know, just for the aesthetics, let's make it a little bit, little bit broader than this. So we'll just go back across. And um, so the five by five would be from here through to here, but we'll just go a little bit further around just so we've got like a, an access point all the way around this one. 
Okay, so uh, we'll then open this one up. I'll just pause this until this is ready. By the way, uh, dwarves are good at counting up to 10, but then they approximate after that. <laughs> so they're slowly getting through their food and drink. Okay, we've found Cinnabar back in through this side. Um, so anything over 10, this is their stock levels, their basic stock levels. We're fine here. Just keep on looking at this though, just sort of see if there are potential problems. 50 food, 50 drink. We're not really getting through that in any sort of great, um, great uh, speed. So we're, there's no rush to do that. Now, again, the reason I'm actually building this trade depot down here is for security. This is another security um, element. Um, you know, it sort of, it keeps it away from the surface. If anything, if we do have an invasion or something like that, and there's a trade caravan here, at least we should ultimately be able to then close other gates and doors and things eventually, to then be able to do things. So our, our character has just gone off. We only need that one there done. <laughs> anyway, we'll wait for it. Okay, so we've now got this area. She's also gone and and channeled out that area. So we've now got a three wide area for the for the caravans. You can see the carav the uh, wagons are three wide. Uh, so we'll now come back down into here. We'll just go back to our um, our build menu and then the, tr the trade depot. And we'll just place this into the middle here. So this one requires three materials. And so so we'll just make this one out of, um, well, let's, let's make it out of brimstone and make it yellow. And so, this will then be built, and so that will be that will be the preparation for the trade caravan. Now, at the moment, this is all very, very unsecure, but I have now built it in a position where I can secure it relatively easily at some point. We'll do that in the next episode. Uh, the other thing we just, the final thing we're going to do is just do the craft menu. So they'll build this out of that yellow material. So I'll leave that one there. We'll just go back down into this into this layer in through here and uh, I'll build a crafts dwarf area over here. I usually like to build crafts dwarves in their own room. In fact, I might just do that because crafts dwarves are a um, no notorious for uh, for going crazy. So let's go and do that off this side somewhere, up, uh, up here somewhere. So we'll, this is why I like to have them in their own separate rooms. So we're going to go and build a door in through there and then another, I'll do a, a three by four there or maybe a four by four, just do that. So our miner will come back in. But again, I'm trying to build, most of the things that we're trying to secure will be sort of built, built in here. We saw that also that we didn't actually have quite enough coming in from the uh, from the caravan at the above. So I might actually make this stockpile a lot larger. original st this initial stockpile we'll then be wanting to build other things in fact what we can do is is we don't want to keep on building up downstairs and, and having multiple doors I want it just one door into our fortress so I don't want to be having too many weak points in through this side this is one this is one weak point or one this is one focus point of focus at this point in time eventually I think in the next episode we'll then sort of look at going deeper but we'll do it from further into the fortress rather than at this particular location. So she's now working through there. She's now done this little area. I'll just pause this one. So uh, what they're suggesting for the trade caravan is that we go across to the build menu again, go to workshops and grab the craft, the craft uh, crafts workshop in here. I'm just going to build that one into um, into this area here. Again, it doesn't, you can't rotate, uh, but it, it, you can, the dwarves can just walk through, you know, they can sort of skip over those different areas. In fact, I might just pop it in the, back corner there yeah why not <laughs> not gonna matter and I'll use brimstone here as well or cinnabar let's use brimstone so we'll unpause again they'll just come in um, they'll bring that um, the yellow so this will be like a yellow workshop so you can color code your workshops just by the materials that you actually are using um, preparing for the caravan we'll just have a bit of a look so this craft wall area is now is now complete so what we'll do here is we're just going to get them to build things out of the materials that we actually have so let's just go and add a new task into here we'll build out a rock because we've got heaps of rock so we'll just go to rock and then we'll make something we can sell uh, a mug is usually a good one to, to go with so uh, we'll just go with rock mugs and um, do it forever <laughs> So we're going to have uh, craft dwarves now sort of coming back in. And um, if we just right click on that one, they'll then start to create at this location. We'll sort of see it's brimstone at the moment, but they will bring rock into here. And um, now one little tip we can do, see how he's taking, it's quite slow to move the rock in there. And so he's now got a piece of andesite and he'll then make a, uh, a mug out of that andesite. 
So that's what he'll then end up doing. Won't be very long. And off he goes. Actually made three, three mugs out of that. So we've got the three different mugs that are now sitting underneath there. They need to be stored somewhere. Now, one thing we don't actually have, I'll, actually I'll talk about this one now, actually. I'll do it now. I'm just thinking of what I should actually cover in the next episode. Uh, storage in here is, you can see there's a lot of stuff just sitting around where we're not really storing it very well. If I go back into the carpenter's workshop, I'm going to add a task to do wooden bins. I'm going to create a few of these, a fair few of these, actually. So let's go and grab those. So we get five bins and then they'll they then be used to store a lot of the collections of things that are actually in our storeroom. So in, th in through here, not, not wood or stone, but some of the, a lot of the other things can be then stored in, in wooden bins. So we'll, uh, we'll right click on that one through there. And uh, also in through here, we're gonna be only using rock. So I'm gonna go and create another stockpile in that area. Whoops, an existing stockpile. So I'll just click on this new one, grab that. And so it just goes in that corner there except, and this one's just going to be stone. So we're only going to, only, only going to be bringing stone into that region. That way the, the craft dwarf should only be taking from this particular uh, stockpile. There's all sorts of settings, which I won't get into, but we can sort of make it so that it uh, this, this workshop will only use whatever we have in this stockpile, which will then speed things up a little bit, but let's not go there. Uh, that's just going to comp make this one a bit more, bit more complex. So we're starting to already now build the crafts. So when we go through, tick, we've built the trade depot, tick, we've got the crafts now under control. And obviously material yeah, is rock. I won't worry about the, the jewelers or anything. We'll just click on OK. And this is just the beginning. So there's a lot more to learn. As you enter new menus, there'll be information and tips, which is fantastic. The help button at the top of the screen contains more guides. Click it now and the tutorial will be concluded. And so that's the flashing button at the top through here. So we click on the help button. So the game is open-ended and you can do whatever uh, you choose. Um, if you like a goal, try to become a barony, then a mountain home. That's a good, that's a really good um, objective, I think, for players. So keep that in mind, um, where you try to become a barony. More likely your dwarves will starve unless you read the first few guides in here. And remember, losing is fun. And that really is the hallmark of Dwarf Fortress. Losing is fun. And it, it, it's incredible the different ways that your fortress can collapse. Uh, it is quite cool the way it sort of does work. So we've done all... We've done all the interactive tutorials now. They're not onerous, but they also aren't as complete as probably what they should be. We then actually have all these different information guides. And so the survival guide through here, in order to keep your citizens alive in the unforgiving wilderness, they will need shelter, drink and, uh, uh, drink and food. Use the arrow at the top of this window to, to minimize the tutorial when it obscures your view. And so it will then just start to go through, read these. These are important read them because uh, these these are quite critical but anyway we've done enough for this particular episode so thanks for watching i hope it's been helpful um i hope it's given some context i'll just pause the game i hope it's given context to um to the actual um to what you you know to your enjoyment of the, of the game and also uh, context to the tutorial if you sort of like you can see that I've actually segmented things out. I haven't just done exactly what it has said. I think that's important to just try to get some structure, try to think about security. Anyway, I'll leave this episode here. We'll come back and do a, a second episode uh, where we then talk about survival and other things that we then need to look at, So, which is not covered by the tutorial, but really should be. It should be covered by the tutorial. I think the tutor it's hard with a game like this because it is so open-ended, uh, but in this instance, uh, I definitely want to do farming, um, get, the, get the food set up. And that's probably enough, you know, to be honest. So it'd probably be a bit of a shorter video next time. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you then.